Hey everyone, I'm Travis Pivey, joining my son, Jordan Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss on any of our awesome science videos. Also, scan the QR code in the top left corner of the screen to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. In today's video, we will learn how to create board models by analyzing the periodic table. So, so let's, let's do this. this. Our learning target for today is, I can make atomic level models by analyzing paths within the periodic table that will help me illustrate the structure, composition, and characteristics of atoms. Let's talk about the first periodic table. In the 1860s, a scientist named Dmitry Mendeleev saw a need to organize the elements. He created a table in which he arranged all the elements by increasing atomic mass from left to right across each row. When he placed eight elements in each row and then started again in the next row, each column of the periodic table contained elements with similar properties. He called the columns of elements groups. Mendeleev's table is called a periodic table and the rows are called periods. That's because the table keeps repeating from row to row and periodic means repeating. Now let's look at the modern periodic table. Look at the following example. The modern table is based on Mendeleev's table, except the modern table arranges the elements by increasing atomic number instead of atomic mass. Atomic number is the number of protons in an atom, and this number is unique for each element. Notice how the atomic numbers increase from left to right and from top to bottom in the table. The modern table has more elements than the Mendeleev's table because many elements have been discovered since Mendeleev's time. Now let's figure out the basics of reading the periodic table to help us develop atomic level models. In the following diagram, each element has its own, what I like to call it, its characteristic picture or profile. Let's take a look at copper, which is used as a key of reference on the periodic table. The number above copper is its unique atomic number, also known as the number of protons. This is what gives each element on the periodic table its own unique identity, kind of like your social security number, which is specific to only you. If the atomic number changes, the element changes. Next, we move down to the chemical symbol, which may consist of one or two letters. The first letter of the symbol is always written in uppercase, and the second letter, if there is one, is always written in lowercase. For example, the symbol for copper is capital C, lowercase u. It stands for cuprium, which is the Latin word for copper. Next, we move to the element name, which is pretty self-explanatory. In this case, the element name is copper. Last, we go to the numbers below the element name, which is the element's average atomic mass. The atomic mass is made up of protons plus neutrons. So how do we find the number of neutrons for copper? That's a great question. We're going to round the atomic mass from 63.55 up to 64 because the number after the decimal is five or more, just like you would in your math class. So now we have an atomic number or number of protons of 29, and we have an atomic mass of 64. But what do we do next? It's simple. We're going to subtract the atomic mass minus the atomic number, or basically say 64 minus 29, which is going to give us 35 neutrons. Quick check for understanding. Find the number of neutrons for each of the following elements using their profile pictures. Take one minute to complete. Let's get it. Now let's talk about atomic Bohr models. These models show the number of protons and neutrons which are located in the nucleus of an atom. Protons are often shown as positive charges and neutrons are often shown as ends or zeros. It also shows the number of electrons surrounding the nucleus and the electron cloud which is sometimes represented by negative signs or circles in the electron cloud. Let's use hydrogen's profile picture and the Bohr model as an example to identify the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in this element. On hydrogen's profile picture, there is a 1 at the top which lets us know that hydrogen has 1 proton, which remember is the same as the atomic number. Notice that there is 1 proton in the nucleus of the Bohr model as well. The number at the bottom represents the atomic mass, which is 1.01, .01, and it rounds to 1. Remember, we said to find the number of neutrons. We subtract the atomic mass minus the atomic number, which in this case will be 1 minus 1, which gives us 0 neutrons. Notice that in the Bohr model, there are no neutrons in the nucleus of the atom. You can tell if your Bohr model is correct for the number of protons and neutrons because these numbers will always add up to the atomic mass. In this case, 1 plus 0 will give us an atomic mass of 1, which is what we have in the profile picture. 
It is important to know that the number of protons and electrons in a neutral atom is always the same. So since there is one proton in hydrogen, then there is one electron as well. This is why you see one electron in an electron cloud on the Bohr model. It is also important to know that you can only put two electrons on the first electron cloud ring, and you can fit up to eight on the second electron cloud ring. We will save the other ring capacities for when you get into upper grade levels. So now let's take a look at the profile picture and Bohr model for carbon. Carbon has an atomic number of six, which is the same as the number of protons shown in the Bohr model. Notice that the Bohr model shows six neutrons. If this is true, then the number of protons and neutrons should add together to give us an atomic mass of 12, which is what is shown on carbon's profile picture. Since carbon has six protons, it should also have six electrons, which is shown on the Bohr model. There are two electrons on the first ring and four electrons on the second ring, which adds up to six electrons. Now it's time for your check for understanding. Use the following profile pictures to create Bohr models for their respective elements. Pause the video and you have five minutes to complete. Ready, set, go. And that's our video for today. Now let's you not to see how proficient you are with making Bohr models through your analysis of the periodic table by taking our video quiz. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code in the top right of the screen or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% are higher for proficiency, record your results your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you, you better keep going because it's not over until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon, and also scan this QR code to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. Peace and have a positive, productive day.